Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Adi and today I've got two special guests. We have Justin Burns. Justin, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you uh, for having me. Of course. And we've got Alex Underhill. How are you doing, Alex? Doing good. Excited to be here. Justin, of course, to no surprise, after winning the first regional with restricted Pokemon in 2019, went on to get top 16 with this team in the, uh, the first major uh, of the GS Cup, semi-GS Cup format that we're playing in right now. Alex also used this team and also got top 16. And so we're here to uh, hear all about this, this really cool Laprization team and also talk about some of the other teams that did got top cut um, and what the metagame looks like two weeks into the format now. So first off, how did you guys come across this team? How did you just, why did you decide to use uh, the Laprization core for this first tournament? So uh, this is uh, largely due to uh, influence from Rogov, but um, it was a really funny process, I guess. Um, we were trying to make, or I was trying to make Zygarde work. And um, I was using, uh, I don't know, just like a, a various different cores or something. And then I ended up coming about just to using, uh, you might remember, the original uh, like Comfy team, uh, like Comfy, Ensign, Rillaboom, Lapras. And there was a Zygarde on there and something else. And uh, I was like, wow, Lapras is doing very well into the metagame right now. I don't even need this stupid Zygarde that is just like taking up a space on my team. And uh, then Ragav was like, all right, well, I want to build more Lapras. And so we started building more Lapras. And then we built, we ended up uh, landing on Laprasization and decided to see what would be the best way to kind of build around those two. Lapras being, you know, a Pokemon that wants to primarily Dynamax and Zacian and kind of, you know, hands off of that, you know, it's allowing your team to choose a, something else to Dynamax and uh, obviously being one of the best, if not the best restricted outside of Dynamax. And so uh, we kind of went from there. Yeah. And uh, Justin, you, I know you were thinking about using the team that I bombed out of the tournament with, which we don't really have to talk about it. <laughs> uh, when did you decide to, to use this, this core? Um, I was actually laddering with the team on Friday with the, uh, the team you were, you used and I I couldn't like all the all the tools it had was real were real unfamiliar to me and I was kind of just struggling to uh, pick up pick up wins consistently so I, I looked at what Ragav and Alex were considering and I saw the this Lapras team and it had it had a lot of tools I was familiar with uh, you know we had Amoongus and Cineroar, Landorus, Zapdos and like a lot of old formats 2018 2019 so I was like you know I think I can pick this up so I Played a few games with it uh, Friday night. I I wanted I wanted to switch to like Regieleki, but Alex said if you if you switch if you change the team you you can't use my rental code. So I uh, I just went with uh, whatever with the with the rental code. Yeah, that was pretty much it. Yeah, it and so like, I'm not gonna make the team for you. You know you uh you just gotta have to use what I had to use. Yeah. yeah. And uh, of course, we've got the rental code on screen, and we've got the uh, the paste as well. So if you are interested in using this team, there's a lot of ways to get access to it. But uh, um, do you want to give me a quick rundown of the uh, what the Pokemon do and what the EV spreads do? Yeah, so I, I guess I'll start with the, the first Pokemon in the box here, and uh, the one that's probably the most interesting. Uh, so... Zacian, uh, I think a lot of people were starting with it just 252 speed and uh, max attack as well, or something close to that. And uh, what we decided was uh, with screens up, uh, Zacian can be pretty bulky. And if you are willing to just not opt into the speed tie between other Zacians, uh, you can drop that speed down significantly. Uh, Dragapult is a Pokemon that has completely fallen off in the metagame, maybe largely due to like max speed Zacian and other such Pokemon, Calyrex uh, Shadow Rider is also a Pokemon that gives Dragapult some trouble. So you don't really need to outspeed Dragapult. And so we dropped all the way down to outspeeding the uh, 200 base speed Pokemon, which I think you still need a jolly nature to do so, unfortunately. And um, it seems like we weren't the only one with uh, this idea. I think it was largely influenced by us, but, uh, you know, Fevzi and Feiss uh, ended up using a bulky Zacian as well with this uh, very interesting set of Swords Dance Sacred Sword, uh, Behemoth Blade, and Protect, of course. Uh, this, the idea being that there are a lot of uh, steel types. There's a lot of uh, defense boosting uh, 
you know, stats or uh, whatnot. And Sacred Sword being able to just go completely ignore that is really nice. And normally you see that kind of on like a Kartana, but uh, I mean, this is the sword dog. It gets all the sword moves. You can name them. And so it does it really well too, especially behind screens. It gets, um, turns to set up Swords Dance and uh, wreak havoc. Yeah, for sure. And uh, we, we saw a couple different moves. We saw, like, Zacian very rarely seems to run a fairy move in this format. Uh, granted, the format is one week old. I guess we'll, we'll have to see how uh, Zacian especially adjusts because it's such a new Pokemon to all of us. But uh, we also saw a lot of Substitute. Um, and But Swords Dance and Sacred Sword especially were such unique choices. Uh, and I think it's it Zacian such a such a strong Pokemon. People have to find really unique ways to beat it. One of those ways is really boosting your defense, like you said. Uh, and so knowing that if that ever becomes really common, if, if people are like really trying to abuse Max Steel Spike or Iron Defense or whatever to be Zacian, then uh, having Sacred Sword as a tool is is going to be a great way to mix things up. Um, even though I think that, I, I might be misremembering, but I feel like the substitute set was a little more common in top cut of this tournament. I actually don't know what uh, other people were using. It is worth mentioning, though, that uh, this was the most common "quote unquote" archetype in Top Cut. You know, there was uh, eight Zacian, uh, and I think every single Zacian had a Lapras, which yep, is like right. kind of wild. I, I mean, I know, um, I know how some of the players in the cut landed on it. I know I don't know how everybody landed on this. Um, there's definitely different approaches. Like uh, Desu's team is like really, really cool. I very much enjoy that team. Uh, of course, I enjoy uh, Fife and Feist and Fevzi's team, which is, uh, I think, just one mon difference. Um, but yeah, like they, there's just lots of, uh, I don't know, it, it's weird that there's all these <laughs> Zacian Lapras and they all came upon like the same conclusion that these are two Pokemon that are great to uh, be used together. Mm -hmm. And I think the diversity in these teams, like we see a team with Alchemy and Sableye on it uh, from from Tommaso Benedetti. I, I'm sure I butchered that name. Uh, we see, you know, a, a version of it with Talonflame on it. There's so many different ways that people have built this. And I think that that just show, goes to show you, one, how strong this core is, that it can uh, be supported by so many different Pokemon, but also that it's uh, it we have a, lot, a long ways to go in terms of optimizing it and figuring out the best way to run this core. And it's going to be really exciting to see how it develops as we move on in the Series 8 metagame. And so I guess uh, moving on down the line... Um... A lot of these EV spreads, again, were created by uh, Ragov or uh, stolen from, like, previous teams or previous uh, from like previous formats. Actually, I think these are all brand new EV spreads. I, I was using a lot of old EV spreads, but Ragov wouldn't let me do that. Uh, so <laughs> these are mostly made by him. Um, uh, a lot of the uh, Pokemon are, like, speed creeping, just trying to, uh, you know, play that endless speed war kind of game. And so the Lapras here... Let's go ahead and talk about it really quick. The, this is a pretty standard set, uh, a light clay Lapras. And uh, I mostly just want to talk about Parish Song. Uh, I've, I've always been a big proponent for the move Parish Song and teams uh, built around it or not. Uh, this team doesn't feel very built around Parish Song, but it still uses it very well. Uh, I think most of the Lapras in Cut were using Parish Song. And it's something that's really nice for also dealing with those defense boosting special defense boosting stacking uh stat just stat boosting in general pokemon that just stack up boosts and you can't get rid of them and uh this gives you the option to uh pseudo phase them you know where you're like okay uh that solgaleo is plus like two defense plus one special defense and also has a weakness policy boost let's just you know give it three more turns on the field before i can get rid of those uh since i'm not able to ko it and then it's one of the best ways to lock up endgames in Dynamax formats. You take two, KO, uh, two KOs and you uh, just click Parish Song. And as long as you're able to withstand the uh, last uh, couple of attacks from your opponent, you lock up the game without even having to do damage. It's uh, such a easy way to secure a win. Uh, yeah, uh, my favorite thing about Parish Song, especially on kind of teams like this, is that you know sometimes once you get into your endgame, um, Sometimes you'll just run out of resources to be able to uh, push for those last two KOs, like maybe Zashin got KO'd or something. But Pear Song allows you to just, you know, kind of ignore ignore that and just, you know, take out take out threats, even though you've uh, you've only got like your Amoongus and your Incineroar left, and you can't really, you know, take the KOs from uh, just straight damage. Yeah, that was something that uh, I actually all three of us ran the same team in Players Cup one with the uh, the Lapras comfy stuff, 
Um, and that was similar in that, in, the, in terms of Lapras, Incineroar, and a really bulky grass type. Uh, the difference is that team didn't have a Zacian on it, and so it could really <laughs> struggle to take the last two KOs. This team, Zacian just is immediate damage whenever you need it, but the dynamic, I guess, is still the same in that if you are struggling to take those last two KOs, Parry Song can really win you the game. And a lot of times, uh, from my experience, and not in this format, but in past formats, when you're playing with light Clay Lapras, you really are, are missing that damage output uh, to two cleanup games with Lapras. But uh, the Incineroar and the Moongus uh, fill out that Firewater Grass Core that is, is always so strong when you have screens up, make it really difficult for your opponent to damage you and then um, help you clean up the game. So you guys want to talk about this? Yeah, so the Incident Among Us, it's uh, honestly, it's it sounds ridiculous when I say that uh, just about like right before or during the tournament, I had the realization that, wow, turns out Incineroar and Among Us are still crazy good supporters in a restricted format. And it just felt like they were the Pokemon that could enable any game plan. Uh, that's kind of how it was in the past. Uh, wouldn't you agree, Justin? Like it just, they kind of can do, like mm -hmm. they can make your team, uh, they can whatever optimize your team for whatever strategy you're trying to go for. And and Cinero and Amungus were in fact the uh, the best restricted pair in 2019. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like there's just uh, I don't know. There's so much you can do with these two Pokemon uh, that uh, literally any strategy can work with them. Um, I honestly wouldn't be surprised uh, if uh, people just started their teams with these two Pokemon and started to figure out what's the restricted Pokemon or my Dynamax Pokemon that works the best around these two right now because you can, like I said, do anything with them. Or you pick your favorite restricted, you know, I want to build around Zekrom, and then let's also just slap Instant Amoongus on there so we're not weak to anything else because these Pokemon can do it all. Yeah, and so these Pokemon are relatively uh, standard in terms of their moves, there's only a couple things that you can really change, but let's. I want to focus on those. So your Amoongus, uh, you have one flex move spot on Amoongus, and you chose to run Pollen Puff on it. How did that move perform for you? Pollen Puff was uh, pretty strong. It was uh, it was a fun move that you got to click occasionally with, uh, you know, just like the, the healing aspect. Um, it was also, I guess, somewhat nice that it still damaged like Rillaboom, uh, I guess. Like that was like one time that it actually got to do like damage to the opponent. Uh, but other than that, uh, yeah, it's pretty nice for healing. I think that's uh, one of the main uh, reasons for running an Assault Vest Incineroar. Uh, it's kind of what we did on the Comfy team. We had Assault Vest Incineroar with Floral Healing. Uh, Incineroar, uh, when you choose to just like get all the bulk on it, you know, it's got solid defense with uh, Intimidate and the uh, Investment. It's got solid special defense with the Assault Vest. Um, you can just keep switching in endlessly and endlessly into hits and then eventually heal it back up and then keep switching it endlessly and endlessly back into the hits. Um, so yeah, Pollen Puff is really cool. Uh, it's also solid for the Parish end game if you need to keep a Pokemon alive a bit longer. It's good behind screens because uh, you know your opponent's doing less damage than your Pokemon are going to stick around longer, and Pollen Puff makes them stick around even longer. It just kind of uh, ramps up exponentially. Yeah, Pollen Puff was uh, honestly incredible for me as well, especially with uh, Zacian. You know, it's it's kind of like interesting because this this team. Like aside from the Zacian, it really struggles to deal damage. So, really, really keeping your Zacian around is is important. And it's it's just so bulky. And once you get it behind screens and let it take all that damage, if you uh, if you give it a pollen puff, it just heals that damage right off. And your opponent has to, you know, do all that work just to uh, just to get it back down again. And it's yeah, pollen puff plus Zacian is incredible, honestly. Yeah, for sure, it's. Uh, it, it's got that comfy uh, floral healing vibe. Uh, not nearly as good, but then it's just so much bulkier and Regenerator lets it live forever. And then you chose to put a Focus Sash on it, which is really the other aspect of Amoongus that's pretty flexible. Why did you choose a Focus Sash over... Is another? it flexible? Is it? Is it? Well, that's a good question. Is it flexible in this format? Because it was definitely flexible <laughs> I do not feel it's fl very flexible anymore. Maybe it's largely because... like Maybe Koba Berry is still fine. I just am so uh, annoyed by those horses that don't let you eat your berries and to the point that I just don't really like running resist berries on uh, Among Us. But um, I mean, maybe Koba Berry can still work fine. You know, of course, if the opponent has like a Thunderous or a Charizard on the field, it's probably not that likely that they have one of those unnerved horses next to it. Uh, so maybe Koba Berry is still viable. But I think Sash is just the uh, all around best item. And if you're not running Sash on your Among Us, it's probably because you uh, desperately need it on something else. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think if your sash isn't taken, you gotta put it on a Mingus. Um, it just it, it just guarantees that it'll take two hits in a in a turn. And 
That, that's real important. Uh, but yeah, that mm-hmm. makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and so then the Ensign, uh, I'll briefly mention that, uh, like, I don't love Snarl Ensign, and that I do much prefer to have the, uh, like, other Dark Attack, Throat Chop, or Dargus Lariat, uh, just to do much more considerable damage to Pokemon like Calyrex, Shadow Rider, and um, Dargus Lariat's also cool for ignoring those, uh, again, just kind of really worried about the uh, Steel-type, uh, uh, I guess, defense boosts, and ignoring those with Dargus Lariat is cool, too. Um, but Snarl is good when you don't get to run Parting Shot. Uh, you know, it, Ensign can damage re- reduce uh, physical attackers. However, um, when you get rid of Parting Shot, it doesn't do as well into special attackers. Uh, Assault Vest does help that, but not it doesn't support the whole team. Snarl does that and uh, still gives you somewhat of a dark move. Um, I, I think that if it was, if you were to change the team and uh, you know. Uh, switch things around, get Parting Shot back on there because you don't have an Assault Vest, then I would uh, recommend dropping Snarl for uh, one of the like actual damage-dealing or damage dealing, uh, Dark Attacks. Mm-hmm. And the other interesting part of Incineroar, because uh, the, these moves, with the exception of the Dark move, these moves are pretty much the, the standard on Assault Vest Incineroar. But the other interesting part is the EV spread and especially the speed stat. Now, I noticed that, uh, that Colin also ran the speed stat on his team, which was very different. Um, and so, of course, it's it's a Rago spread. But uh, how how important do you think uh, running speed investment on Incineroar is in this format? Do you really want to speed creep other Incineroar? It's felt nice, honestly. Uh, always having the faster fake out, it just I think enables your strategies more often. Especially uh, this might be like this might be a point. It might not be. But when you're running Incin with mm-hmm. Zacian, it's nice to have the faster fake out because Zacian is a Pokemon that is very susceptible to fake out. It can't Dynamax to ignore it. And so uh, if you want to be able to, I don't know, do anything in the face of Fake Out, you want to be able to fake them out first. Otherwise, you're just kind of uh, pressured into protecting. And uh, so that's one aspect that I can think of that's a a strong reason to have a faster Fake Out. Otherwise, I think it does just enable more and more of your strategies. Um, We'll have to see how the Speed Creep War for Incineroar goes. Um, I I had like an awkward moment in my match against uh, Feist in top cut uh, where I got eliminated, where uh, my Incineroar had shown itself to be faster than uh, his with a, a the Intimidate reveal. And Lapras is uh, built to be one speed point slower than Incineroar on this team. And so I doubled into the Incineroar and it turns out that uh, their Incineroar speed tied the Lapras. Like, you know, you know we're, there's like this 90 speed stat or whatever, just like 90 uh, plus 94, I think was where we were at 94, 95 is really under fire right now. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I think that if I was, if I could have guaranteed being faster there, I wouldn't have mind dedicating eight more EVs. It, it, it's uh it's a, I don't know. It's an endless struggle. Yeah. I, uh, I, I didn't have much of a hand in the EV spreads for this team, but I'm, you know, I'm always a fan of, Fast Incineroar. I think my my NAIC eighteen team had a had an even faster Incineroar, like yeah, probably approaching the uh, the one hundred stat. So, you know, I'm no I'm no stranger to uh, Fast Incineroar, and you know, having the faster fake out is great. Alex hit the nail on the head with uh, how Zacian is kind of weak to fake out sometimes. Yeah, for sure. And it feels like, uh, especially early format, we always see Turbo Mungus come back into the fray. So, us being that is really important if you don't have a safety goggles. Uh, I think I know of at least one person who ran Turbo Mungus in top cut of this tournament, so uh, that was very convenient. Um, and then having a snarl that is faster than some special attackers, like like potentially opposing Lapras, given how often that came up in top cut, uh, I'm sure would have been very convenient as well. Uh, moving on down to the next uh, couple of Pokemon, um, the, these are kind of like the order that they've been added in. Landorus is the last Pokemon, and I'll get to that next, but. Zapdos was on the team as a Pokemon that enjoys sitting behind screens. This is not your uh, typical, um, should I say, you're not your typical, I don't know, 2020, 2021 Dynamax format Zapdos. You know, a lot of people are saying, oh, it gets Hurricane now. Let's slap on a Life Orb and go as fast as possible and uh, run through their team. Uh, This Zapdos is much more uh, stally. It's got Roost. It has foregone the uh, flying coverage that it uh, now has access to. And... It's really there to just kind of end game. Um, you know, he, uh, Roost and uh, Detect enables it to just kind of last really long, especially behind screens. And it's a Pokemon that deals very well with uh, Zacian. Um, I, I mean, Arset doesn't 
uh, hit around uh, Zapdos's typing. You know, a lot of Zacians are running that steel fighting coverage and so are not able to hit Zapdos. And if they do try to, uh, if they do end up in an end game where they have to use Zacian through the Zapdos, static is going to come into play and that's going to lead things to being uh, favorable for you. You've got Heat Wave to hit them super effectively. You've got Roost so that, and like solid physical defense plus double intimidate that uh, really we just didn't want to lose to other Zacian. I mean, we have double intimidate, we have our own Zacian. The team still feels a little bit suspect against other uh, Zacian. So uh, giving yourself as many tools as possible against Pokemon you're scary uh, or Pokemon that are scary for you uh, is important, I think. Yeah, definitely. And this is the one part of the team that I'm going to take a little bit of credit for. Uh, because at the end of Series 7, I was a big advocate for bulky Zapdos on team, especially teams like this. It endgamed really well against Rillaboom and Urshifu and um, Celesteela, which were the three three of the four biggest endgame Pokemon at the time. And uh, Raghav also really enjoyed the set and just adapted it to this metagame, whereas Asian was another one of the really powerful endgame Pokemon. But I know that Justin had some choice words about the Zapdos. He said he didn't want it on the team. Uh, what did you think of the Zapdos, Justin? Yeah, so I guess if uh, if you don't, if, if those of you who haven't uh, really known, don't know me well, I I am one of the biggest Zapdos haters uh, across uh, many formats, and I, I I personally did not like the set at all. Um, it was nice to have electric, uh, you know, the electric flying typing is is nice into some mashups. However, um, if you look at the the move set, it doesn't have doesn't really have any supporting moves it, it just roosts for itself and it has you know the attacks and um the attacks really don't do any damage at all uh because of uh the way it's uh, ev trained so it, it's it's difficult to have like in the the early game because it's not really doing much to progress your board state um so honestly i think i, I think teams are pretty happy to like just kind of lead zation and something else and like kind of go to go to town at the start of the game um and in honestly in the end game it's really just kind of a glorified stall on it, it it beats the stuff you you try to ko stuff that it, that beats the zapdos and then the zapdos comes in and you you just have type advantage on the stuff that it resists and that's really that's really like similar to how ferrothorn works and um, I, I personally wasn't a fan. I when I when I was bringing it to matchups, I was uh, still struggling to to win the games where I needed it. And on the other hand, when when Incineroar and Amoongus were good into the matchup, it was um, uh, not really difficult at all. So I think if there's one thing that's replaceable on this team, it's Zapdos. And I guess Alex will get into the Landris later, but I I honestly really like the Landris a lot more, even if it was the last month added for certain matchups i thought it did its job a lot better than zapdos did its own job yeah the landers we can go ahead and talk about that is uh it was the last pokemon on the team as a uh sun matchup you know so it's got the lumber it's got the rock move and the flying move to deal with venusaur and or charizard in uh it it was a little bit i don't know we were hesitant to add it for a while because it seemed like it was the pokemon to be added uh, at one point i think it was a t-tar and uh, i don't think that t-tar was doing a whole lot but um, yeah, we were just worried about being weak to like uh, the very specific combo of uh, Sun plus Calyrex Ice, which I think Burns you ended up fighting. In I fought it twice. <laughs> twice. <That's... laughs> uh, how did those go for you? Did you end up beating it both times? Yeah, I, I won both times. It was uh, uh... yeah. So it turns out that Landris is enough uh, for that. Uh, I least, I don't think I brought Landris actually to those. Okay. Okay. So maybe um, the rest of the team isn't yeah. as weak to that as we thought. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, I don't remember what happened. I was like, yeah, so game. So the first set, they weren't bringing Torkoal. And the second set, they were trying oh, to go. Yeah, yeah. They had, like, they had a they had a Thunderous mode that they were trying to go for. Um, yep. And that was, like, I couldn't bring Lando to that. So I was just trying to, to uh, Zation my way through the, through the games. That's fair. That's fair. Um, and so the, this, uh, this Landorus is definitely one that, like, people have seen across, uh, I guess, Series 7 is the only format that Landorus has been legal for. But uh, this kind of Landorus is uh, starting, like, it was picking up steam then, I think it's still uh, picking up steam now, and it's just a solid one. You run the three moves that you want to be clicking while Dynamaxed. Going back to your tournament run, uh, 
Justin, would you say, can you tell me about one of the more memorable games that you played? Um, so I guess the most memorable for me was my win it in against Edu, and it was um, pretty, really close, really exciting. Um, I, game one, ended up going to time, uh, and I had the, uh, I had, I, I lost my zation, so I couldn't really try to push through the last two KOs, but I had three Pokemon remaining, so I took that game. Game two, uh, Edu tried to get a little more aggressive early. Uh, but unfortunately, he missed a Nature's Madness on the first turn, and that ended up uh, costing him as I was able to uh, to survive the uh, the offensive Celesteel as Max turns. Yeah, and do you know if Edu streamed the tournament or not? Yeah, he did. So that, those, that VOD would be on his Twitch. Yeah, so definitely if you want to see some gameplay of this team in action, uh, that's a great place to see it. Uh, and then, Alex, I think I know what you're going to talk about uh, for your most memorable game. So I'm just going to pull it up. But you want to tell everyone what happened? Yeah, so uh, I'm probably just going to pick that last round. I, I'm actually scrolling back up uh, to the teams that I fought in the tournament. And I had some uh, tough losses, some uh, decent sets. But my uh, last round, the uh, winning in, was very notable uh, for what uh, Adi is showing on the screen here. Um um, the Reggie Gigas on the opposing team ice punched Zapdos at some point and froze me. And I was frozen for a total of like four turns uh, without uh, without being able to thaw. And on the last turn of the game with Parrish counting down on Zacian, I attempt to protect. And um, the Zacian, uh, I don't know if would have been able to knock me out. I do not remember the damage range from the previous attack that it dealt to me. Um, unfortunately gets fully paralyzed. I, uh, I chalked that up as a little bit of justice. I did not end up getting uh, knocked out from uh, that. And uh, even though I didn't thaw, uh, I still was able to win the game uh, with a frozen frozen chicken just kind of sitting there uh, floating in the air. Um, yeah, I, I thought this was a very comical ending uh, to the uh, final game of the Swiss. Um, yeah, it, it was a really tough matchup. Like um, in the first round, I uh, or the first game, I my opponent called me out really hard on turn one. So I worked really hard to bring it back uh, and ended up perishing myself uh, out of the game because I thought my minus one speed Zapdos would underspeed a Rillaboom. They had mid speed Rillaboom totally caught me off guard game two. I ended up winning. And then game three, I changed strategies and was still able to win despite the uh, freeze. Uh, I, I did everything else to bring luck into my favor. I tried to double protect and didn't get it. I don't know. It was just a stupid, stupid set. Uh, it was really funny. I'm not going to describe it all. But yeah, the, the ending there is what's important. Zapdos remained frozen for about four turns, remained uh, frozen for the fourth, and uh, was still able to clutch the game just by existing. So uh, maybe thing. Zapdos isn't the best, but it, it, at least it exists, Burns. That's all it needed the to do. The best thing Zapdos can do is just sit there on the field. It's like <laughs> uh, it's like, it's like the, that YouTube meme, Luigi wins by doing absolutely nothing. That was exactly what Zapdos did. It won by doing absolutely nothing for like four turns. Um What's funny is I can still eat a citrus berry while frozen. Man, Zapdos, wake up. Yeah, <laughs> thaw, Zapdos, man. Zapdos is really good when all you need it to do is just do nothing. Yeah, I mean, that's his job. That's uh, and, his and so if you want to hear more about Alex and I, I think Justin's uh, yes. run through the tournament, uh, you can check it out on this week's episode of the Hyper Voice that's coming out. When does it normally come out, Alex? I don't know when it's going to be coming out exactly. Probably like Friday or so. Uh, we'll be recording it probably tomorrow. So um, yeah, we'll be uh, talking a bit about more the a bit more about our runs and teams there too. If you want to hear it in podcast form, mm -hmm. there's uh, there's another question here uh, from uh, Dandy. I believe that's uh, Thomas DeRosa, right? Yeah. Um, who asks, what would uh, you say is the most effective counter your team has? I don't know if this is talking about the Lapdog team. Uh, and it's Lapdog and how it deals with... Okay, so Lapdog and how it deals with uh, the Kyogre. Honestly, it looked uh, iffy, but I, I played at Kyogre in some point in the tournament. I, I guess it would have to be during Swiss because I didn't actually play any top cut games. Um, oops. No, I did. I, uh, I lost my... I got by in the first round, basically, from a no-show, and then I lost the next round. But I played Tyogre some point in Swiss, I thought, and it went very well. Um, uh, Lapras and Amoongus in the lead is a very strong way to deal with their Pokemon. You get up to screens, uh, they have to address the Amoongus uh, almost immediately. Um, and so you can bait that with a Protect, you can switch out, um, 
and start putting on pressure that way. And then late game, Zacian and Zapdos behind screens just do incredible things. Y you wouldn't believe uh, the stuff that Zacian can do behind screens. I don't know if we uh, talked that up enough at this point. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Adi had mentioned that Dialga seems pretty solid into Zacian. Uh, behind screens, it's easily living that max quake. It's hilarious. Uh, like, uh, I was at about... Um, like 60% once and uh, this Groudon went for Precipice Blades and uh, I remember like surviving it or something because of screens. Like the, the Pokemon has incredible uh, bulk already that can just be further amplified by the uh, the screens and by Intimidate and um, it's really it really just hangs on forever. So um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I know that's like a side tangent about just Zacian and screens, but that's just something that we haven't talked about enough. But I would say that the way we deal with uh, Kyogre stuff is uh, making use of our water absorb, electric, and grass type, simply enough. Yeah, so I, I think in terms of our team specifically, Sol Solgaleo Spectre just is real devastating. You have to, I, I think, you know, I my my game my games were so close, but I had to call turn one right every game. And it was like you had to have Amoongus mind games and which one is, you have to, decide which which target the Solgaleo is going to go for and if you get the get it wrong then you just lose um then if you get it right you still have to try to you still have to try to play a whole a whole game on the uh going uphill so i think i think i would say Solgaleo is probably the best probably the the strongest uh counter to laprization in particular you have to you have to really tech out the team to have a good matchup and like dezu had his barathorn um as you can if you can if you've watched the vods um the Ferrothorn really was the decider yeah, well, uh, I think that's going to wrap it up for us. Thank you both so much for coming on. It was really great to hear about this incredible team and also all of your thoughts into the metagame. Uh, do you have any last words or shout outs you want to give? No, just thanks for uh, having me on. It's been a, it's been a while since I, I uh, played Pokemon this much as I have in the past week. So I'm really happy to come on and talk about my experiences. It's been a fun format. Uh, I guess I will uh, shout out my own podcast, as Adi had already done earlier, uh, The Hyper Voice. Um, you can find us wherever you find podcasts. Um, and uh, I'd also like to shout out Ragov once more, just for uh, doing the large legwork with uh, making this team. And um, uh, yeah, just it, it's been fun building with uh, Ragov. So yeah, shout out to him. Ragov yeah. is the GOAT. Thank you all for watching. As you might have noticed, this is a clip from a live stream that we did on Tuesday. If you are interested in watching the full stream, which includes an hour-long metagame breakdown, I've linked it in the description down below. And I'm planning on doing a stream like this every Tuesday, so I'd love to have you tune in next time. If you are itching to use this team in a tournament, there are three tournaments that I know of going on this weekend. There is the Women's Tour and the Arena Aurora tournaments happening this Saturday. And also the RVGC circuit is kicking off with tournaments on Friday and Sunday, which are ladder tours. So... This is the perfect team for you to try out in any one of those tournaments. And thank you all for watching, and until next time, I will see you all later.